Hey guys! Hey guys! Hey girls! Hey guys! Rewind Mike here. Hey, hey guys! guys. Hey guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks guys for helping me do some weeding. <laughs> anyway, Rolling Thunder. Now, when I was 11 years old, I used to hit up the Farmore, um, which was an old pharmacy store, kind of like Walgreens, that actually rented video games and movies, and you could rent a game for 75 cents and keep it for five days. So, Rolling Thunder is a game that I rented all the time. I mean, instantly brings me back memories to that old store. I eventually picked up the game for my own collection uh, because it was really cheap. And I had a paper route, I had to buy my own games, my parents were poor, so I had to buy my own clothes, I had to buy my own games, that's how I got my Sega Genesis, uh, but I'm getting off topic here. The point is, is since I had to buy the games myself, I always looked out for cheap games. Rolling Thunder was one of them, and so was Codenamed Viper. I had no idea what this game was, but it was Capcom, it was cheap, so I picked it up. And guess what? It played just like Rolling Thunder, and I was a bit perplexed. I was like, is this infringement? I mean, are they blatantly copying this game? Is it a ripoff? Or did the same people make it? I mean, this one was Tengen, this one was Capcom. I, I was 11 and 12 years old. I didn't know. So I've always wondered about these two games. Why are they so similar? Why did they play nearly identical to each other? So on this episode of Versus, I thought, what the hell? Let's take a look at these two back-to-back, -back, compare them, and see what the deal is. Galaga. Dig Dug. Pac-Man. Namco. Without question, Namco was one of the most important and influential video game companies to come out of Electronic Gaming's infancy in the 1980s. With blockbuster hit after blockbuster hit, Namco consistently pushed the limits within a still relatively new market and set standards that left its peers but little choice to follow suit, even motivating and pushing their rivals to outdo each other. In 1986, while Slayer was reigning in blood and Peggy Sue got married, Namco unveiled a mind-blowing arcade game for its time, a side-scrolling evade-and-shoot action platformer titled Rolling Thunder. It wasn't long before the game was converted for home consoles, released for the NES in 1989 by unlicensed publisher Tengen. Rolling Thunder is notorious for its unforgiving challenge. It has also always been a fairly inexpensive game, so naturally 11-year-old me snagged it up and have enjoyed it ever since. A year later, being a shameless Capcom fanboy and relying on my paper route money to buy new games, I spied on KB Toys' clearance rack, codenamed Viper, for 20 bucks. $20 for a new game was a no-brainer, and not knowing what I was getting myself into, picked it up. Lo and behold, Codename Viper played just like Rolling Thunder. What a ripoff! But you know what? That's not a bad thing. But why are the two so blatantly similar? Surely the same company that made Rolling Thunder also had a hand in Viper's creation, right? This has piqued my curiosity for 27 years. I want some answers, damn it! Arc System Works actually developed Rolling Thunder for Namco's Famicom release, which was then licensed to Tengen for distribution here in the States. Wait a minute, Arc System Works? The same Arc System Works that later developed the excellent Hardcore Uprising? Yep, the very same. Arc System Works would subsequently develop Codename Viper for Capcom following the development of Rolling Thunder. Hey, when you're hot, the best thing to do is just let it ride. So since both games are very similar to each other, we may as well compare the two and see what the differences are between Rolling Thunder and Codename Viper, and their similarities. Is Codename Viper a shameless ripoff of Rolling Thunder, or does it offer enough to stand on its own merits? Let's check it out. In Rolling Thunder, you control a secret agent codenamed Albatross in order to rescue his fallen comrade Leela, who has been kidnapped and is being held captive in a hidden underground base by the evil terrorist organization known as Geldra. 
In Codename Viper, you assume the role of Kenny Smith. The Jet? A secret agent in his own right, obviously codenamed Viper, only his plight comes against the feudal war on drugs in South America. Following orders from Commander Jones, Viper is sent in to infiltrate the jungles of Venezuela to put an end to the evil syndicate in charge of relentlessly supplying and distributing illegal drugs to the United States. What a buzzkill. Both protagonists begin their respective games armed with a handgun and 50 bullets. In both games, you have a life meter consisting of two units. If you touch the enemy, either by taking a fist to the face or by simply grazing peepees, you lose a unit of health. Lose both and you die. Take a bullet, grenade, laser, spikes, steel girder, and it's instant death. Well, in Rolling Thunder, anyway. Codename Viper actually allows you to obtain up to two additional units of health, so these same insta-kill obstructions from Thunder actually only deal in two units of damage in Viper. We'll get more into that in just a bit. Both games also begin with a time limit of 200 seconds and a player stock of three lives. Both Viper and Albatross share similar character sprites and movements, walking at the same pace with near-identical jumping mechanics. The majority of both games are made up of two floors, in which both agents are able to ascend and descend respectively by either jumping up to the floor above or dropping to the one below. The jumping differences between the two may seem a bit subtle, but actually drastically differentiates the gameplay between the two adventures. In Rolling Thunder, when Albatross leaps into the air, the arc in which you jump is set, and your character's movement cannot be manipulated in mid-air, similar to that of Ghosts and Goblins. Not the case in Viper, as tricky jumps are made more manageable with the ability to maneuver in mid-jump. But the most glaring difference, one that makes Viper much more forgiving versus its bastard little brother, is the ability to fire your gun in mid-air. One of the main reasons Rolling Thunder is so freaking brutal is the fact that Albatross cannot, I repeat, cannot fire while jumping. I've never understood this choice of mechanic from Namco and was elated once I found this not to be the case in Codename Viper. Score 1 for Capcom. In both Rolling Thunder and Codename Viper, the enemy soldiers are identified by the colored uniforms that they wear. Unarmed soldiers who only take a single shot to kill in Rolling Thunder don red jumpsuits with pink hoods. Comparably, in Codename Viper, the same type of soldier wears gray and orange, while the unarmed soldier who takes two shots to kill is emblazoned in blue and white. His misfit brother sports blue and yellow in Rolling Thunder. Other soldiers' actions in both games can be predicted by the colors that they wear. Like the protagonists, the antagonists also move in a similar fashion. Even animals get in on the action with Rolling Thunder's extremely annoying bats versus Codename Viper's slightly less bothersome birds. While Rolling Thunder also has enemies who throw grenades, Codename Viper has napalm soldiers, frogmen, snipers, and an odd assortment of criminals. The Screaming Maniac comes to mind versus Rolling Thunder's Ape Man. Both games lack boss battles other than the final confrontation. We'll cover that in further detail here shortly. Levels in both Rolling Thunder and Codename Viper also share many similarities. Each stage in both games, save for the final one, is broken up into two halves, loaded with doors that can be entered. Enemies go in and out of the numerous doors that line the walls in both games. In Rolling Thunder, some doors are marked with signs reading bullets and arms, which provide handgun and machine gun ammunition respectively. Codename Viper also has these exact same doors, but they are unmarked. While using these many doors in both adventures offer cover from enemy fire, Codename Viper actually added a seek and find element to the gameplay. In order to complete each stage in Codename Viper, you must first rescue the commando hidden behind any one of the numerous doors within. He then provides you with the bomb that must be used to destroy the barrier, impeding your escape from that particular stage. The level cannot be completed without first obtaining this elusive explosive. 
Rolling Thunder simply requires you to reach point B from point A. You can finish each stage without opening a single door whatsoever. While this may sound tedious on Viper's part, hostages are also hidden behind the many doors, offering bonus points which eventually translate into extra lives. Not to mention hidden one-ups and time and vitality increases. Time and health increases are also hidden behind doors in Rolling Thunder, but life is simply restored as opposed to Codename Viper, where your life meter can actually be increased until you reach game over. Insta-kill weapons and traps that normally end your life with a 2 bar health meter now only drain those 2 bars. You can increase your life meter up to 4 units. The two games also share the fact that the first few stages are paired up. For example, stages 1 and 2 on Rolling Thunder share the same secret base environment and background music. Same with Codename Viper, only in a jungle. Stages 3 and 4 share a setting amid ancient ruins, while Rolling Thunder's stages 3 and 4 take place in an underground cave. Both games seem to like the prison bars look. These similarities only last as far as stage 5. After that, Rolling Thunder recycles stages 1 through 5 for stages 6 through 10, reusing the first five stages environments only with remixed obstacles and enemy placements, vastly increasing the difficulty. Codename Viper continues the paired stage approach, transitioning from stage 5 to 6, and is with the previous levels, retaining the same environment and music as its preceding stage. Rolling Thunder boasts of 10 stages, as opposed to Codename Viper's 8. When a stage is finished in Rolling Thunder, a number of different scenarios play out on a giant screen monitored by the enemy. The same happens in Viper, although on a much smaller monitor, presumably being viewed by the head of the evil drug syndicate. A password is provided after the third and sixth stages in Viper, while Rolling Thunder offers a password for every odd stage beginning with three, which can be written down from the game over screen. Passwords for both games consist of a numerical code. As mentioned before, the only boss battle to be had in either game are the final showdowns with Mabu and Commander Jones respectively. After one of the most challenging enemy onslaughts in all of 8-bit gaming, you face off against the leader of the Geldra organization, Mabu. After discovering that your boss was the mastermind drug lord in codename Viper, Commander Jones gets taken out in his lavish Beverly Hills mansion. Triumphant? Both Albatross and Viper celebrate their victories on candid camera, while two exceptional NES titles come to their conclusion. So there you go, Rolling Thunder and Codename Viper, two excellent NES games. And the best part is that they're both still cheap. These games have always been cheap ever since they were released. And they are excellent. So if you haven't played these yet, I highly, highly recommend them. All right, so thanks a lot for checking out my Rolling Thunder and Codename Viper comparison. Now, I know I didn't cover everything, like the fact that both games have limited continues, but I didn't feel it was that important to go over. But if there's other stuff that I missed that you feel was important, uh, let's discuss it in the comments below. Let me know. Did I miss something? Also, a big shout out and thank you to Andrew from Retro Island Gaming, Mike Tendo from Dongled, and Rewind Mike. All three have fantastic channels, so if you've yet to check them out, I will leave links to their channels in the description below. Thanks a lot, guys. And thank you for watching this episode. I will catch you later.